especially in this new environment where we've had interest rates held low for a decade uh, by uh, aggressive monetary policy. I will tell you this, that I think the inverted yield curve certainly has a very high batting average for being a predictor of a recession. Unfortunately, it's not just a predictor, it's causal. And the, and the reason for that is um, financial institutions, banks, stop the lending process. If they can't you know, borrow short and lend long and make a profit, it just it slows down economic activity. But I will tell you this, because a yield curve is flattening, it doesn't need to invert. And there's three things I think that can happen, and any one of them could help. I think the composition of the balance sheet, the Fed's got a $4 trillion balance sheet, if in fact the role off starts to focus um, more on the on the front end of the curve than the back end of the curve, then you could see some spreading there. If the Treasury new issuance focused less on the front end and more on the back end of the curve, you could certainly see uh, some spreading out there. And and the third thing is, we may not be the only central bank that's that's raising rates at some point in time, either by the end of this year or the start of next year. And that's what's really kept the long end of the curve down. We're the only central bank that's taking away accommodation, so our two years matching our monetary policy, whereas our 10-year is really anchored to what's going on in, in global interest rates. If you saw any uptick, if the ECB starts to take some yeah. accommodation away in the fourth quarter and the first quarter, you, you might see a lift there and that could broaden out. So just because we're flattening doesn't mean we need to invert, but inversion would be bad and the Fed's paying very close attention to that. So it seems like you kind of agree with the San Francisco Fed yesterday. So this is what they said in one of their papers. They said there's no clear evidence in this data that this time is different or that forecasters should ignore part of the current yield curve flattening because of the presumed macro financial effects of Q they basically tried to strip that out and just look at expectations and they said look it doesn't matter why the long end is down it just matters if you invert and that either way uh, you're looking at a recession risk what part of the curve so I don't know if you guys can understand this all so I'll kind of go over it but basically if the yields continue to go up it's very very likely that crypto prices will go up but it's just not crypto um, I do feel like the entire U.S. economy and global economy will go into a recession and it will make commodities like crypto much, much more attractive. The problem is, is this is all controlled by central bankers and no one can really predict what they're going to do. So it's important to pay attention to the news and see what happens. Um, they're forecasting that there will be hikes and small hikes. But at the end of the day, it's once again something you cannot predict and uh Definitely, if the cost of debt continues to go up, uh, we are the most leveraged we've been since the financial crisis, if not more, and uh, we will definitely see an economic correction. So it doesn't make sense that the central banks will allow this, but at the same time, they don't want to do deal with inflation. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, but let me know what you guys think about this, and I will talk to you soon.